Today I woke up feeling chaotic enough to build a monotype normal team full of never used Pokemon, and I'm gonna put them up against some top tier squads and see how it goes. What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Wi-Fi battle. Today I've got a doozy of a match for you. Of course, I've got my absolutely beautiful normal types over here. And as always, if you guys enjoy these types of videos, consider subscribing. Only about 40% of the viewers are subscribed, so help out the channel. It's free and it only takes you a second. Anyway, looking at the matchup here, you know, of course, the opponent, everybody you find on these Wi-Fi battles carries, you know, some pretty overused standard stuff. So at least it's easy to predict, but... You know, it's going to be a little bit of an uphill battle uh, <laughs> with my normal types here. But let's go ahead and jump right into the match. So, they are going to end up leading off with the Gliscor as I decide to go with Exploud. Homeboy just got out of church. He's looking extra holy today. And this is honestly a pretty solid lead choice for me just because I have coverage on pretty much everything that they've got. And not a lot wants to take a Specs uh, Boom Burst from the Exploud. So I decided to just go for the Boom Burst here as... Uh, as anticipated, this thing ends up just being a Stealth Rock lead, and I just go ahead and yell at that dude, and that is actually going to take out the Gliscor. So I didn't even need to bust out the Ice Beam. Honestly, Stab Boom Burst is a force to be reckoned with from x -Cloud. I tell you what, people be sleeping on my holy friend over here. Anyway, uh, they get a free switch, they decide to go into Scizor. Now, this is kind of a little bit of a scary mon for me to deal with. Uh, if it decides to go for Swords Dance, it's very scary, plus it does have... Uh, fighting moves in its move pool, and obviously, you know, nothing on my team enjoys that. So, I decided to bring in Titty Milk, and the main reason for that is because, first of all, who doesn't look like they would enjoy some blueberry milk, but also, I can paralyze this thing uh, and make it a little easier for me to take care of here. So, it actually does end up revealing that it goes for the Brick Break right to the udders. Honestly, pretty disrespectful, and Titty Milk is like, hey, what the hell? It does actually reveal... Uh, that this thing is going to be Life Orb, so it's full-on offensive Scizor, and that is quite scary, but goes for the Bullet Punch here on this next turn, as uh, I am able to take that, because Titty Milk is thick as shit over here, bouncing around, udders flopping, just having a time, uh, and I do get off the Thunder Wave, which is great, just basically makes it so, uh, you know, Scizor is crippled, and I can, you know, outspeed and be able to take care of this thing later on, so I kind of have to sacrifice the Mill Tank to be able to uh, make this, you know, freaking big meaty claws homie able to you know, die later on. But I think and maybe I can get a chance here for a Parahax and then get up a, a free Stealth Rock before I go down. Uh, unfortunately, the Bullet Punch does break through the Para and down goes the Mill Tank. So, wasn't able to get up my Stealth Rock, which does kind of suck, but I was at least able to cripple uh, freaking Sizer over here. So, this allows me actually a pretty nice window to just bring in the meatloaf. I'm thinking you already had you already had y'all juice, you fucking blueberry milk. Now it's time for the entree out here. And uh, a paralyzed mon is perfect for Dunsparce to set up on. Uh, both because I can potentially get some free turns just like that where it got fully parried. And that allows me to get up my coil. Honestly, I don't know how this guy coils. He's looking pretty uh, pretty short. You can't really wrap this guy around. I don't, I don't know. I'm not going to question it. Little butt plug dude is just about to take some names though. So. Um, I get up one coil, and now at this point I'm kind of thinking maybe they're going to switch out, so I decide I'm just going to go for the headbutt. If you don't know, Dunsparce has the ability Serene Grace, which largely increases the chance of secondary effects, so headbutt's always going to freaking flinch. Uh, I mean, not always, but I do get it there, of course, and uh, Leftovers is bringing me back to pretty much full health. So, I'm thinking, okay, they're probably just going to end up staying in here. Uh, I go for the Rock Slide, of course. And that is actually going to take care of Metal Bug. Got a critical hit, don't think it really mattered too much, but Dunsparce is sitting over here in quite the position. I got that coil up. I'm at full health officially now. I just got to take one little tiny nibble of that apple on my leftovers and back to 207, baby. Let's go. Ready to take on the world here as in comes a Garchomp. Now, you know, very scary Pokemon, but I'm a Dunsparce. I'm not afraid. No land shark, get out of here. I'm gonna end up going for a glare. First of all, because it's very funny to paralyze ground types, uh, and also it's nice to get these things uh, slower than me so that I could potentially get some uh, some serene, gl serene grace flinching. Uh, so I go for the glare, I open my eyes for him, and nobody's ever seen Dunsparce's eyes, so apparently if you do, you just get paralyzed in fear, you know, which makes sense. Um, so I do get the para off on the guard chomp. And it actually ends up being still faster because, you know, I'm freaking Dunsparce. But a freaking Parahax would be nice. Um, as they go for the Iron Head, trying to give me a, a taste of my own medicine here, I'm thinking, I'm not flinching. No way, you can't flinch me. I am, I'm the one who flinches. Or whatever the hell Heisenberg said. Knox, or whatever, I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> it does have rough skin. 
Um, and I just touch it with my head. So, you know, that's, that probably hurts a little bit there. You know, take some damage from that. So it's looking like uh, without any help from Parahax, Dunsparce is going to not be able to get the sweep that I wanted. As it actually ends up getting a flinch on me with the Iron Head. Literally goes for Iron Head specifically to flinch me and actually gets it. So that is extremely annoying. But I'm like, okay, it's the third turn here. He's going to get Parahaxed. I'm going to be able to get some damage. Unfortunately, it does not. And down goes the Dunsparce. So the sweep was short-lived, but I was able to... You know, take care of Scizor, which is a very scary Pokemon. Garchomp is pretty much in range where anything can pick it off. And I'm proud of my little dude. Dunsparce didn't get an evolution, but he does not need one. Because he, he's already in peak performance mode. So, uh, now I get a free switch into whatever I would like. And, you know, I'm just like, okay, who wants to take care of a Garchomp? I figure watching a Raticate take care of a Garchomp is not something you see every day. So I send in Raticate here. Uh, of course, I do outspeed because this thing is paralyzed and a facade is going to take care of the chomp. So that is pretty damn solid. Uh, three very scary kind of top tier mons already gone. And uh, I'm feeling pretty confident in my normal fellas here. So uh, they get an, a free switch and they go into yet again, just another Pokemon you see every day that is extremely overpowered and uh, it's not great for me here. So I'm looking at, I don't really have anything that can switch into this, um, but I do have a little bit of a plan. So my plan is this, I'm gonna go for the sucker punch uh, because this thing is definitely faster, and if I can get a little bit of chip damage off on this thing, I can put it to range uh, where it, it can be taken care of later. So, chip damage off does actually do quite a bit. It actually ends up going for the Hydro Pump, which is a bold move. You just may as well just be spitting on my rat over here, because that is the disrespect going for the, the Hydro Pump. Could have could have just Thunderbolted, but no. Decided to go for the, uh, <laughs> the chance at missing... Uh, which would have been great for me. I can't I, freaking throw me a bone here, game. I'm trying my best out here. Um, but good news is I now get a free switch and Explod is coming back. Honestly, Explod is bulkier than you would think. Uh, so I know I can take an attack from this thing for sure. And it will be forced to try to go for a Hydro Pump to get the most amount of damage. As it does end up going for a Dark Pulse. Just for a flinch chance. And guess what? It gets it. So literally, what the hell? <laughs> specifically clicked Dark Pulse to try to flinch, and it, it, it ends up getting it. Um, now I'm thinking I might be in range to die from a Hydro Pump here as it goes for it, and of course, lands it, because nobody misses Hydro Pumps when you're playing against me. Just filling my holes up with water, but I'm resilient. I'm full of water, I'm out here waterlogged, I'm able to live the Hydro Pump, and a Boom Burst does take care of the Rotom. So, kind of really annoying getting flinched by that Dark Pulse, but at least I was able to uh, knock out the freaking washing machine and in comes the next big freaking wall in front of me and that is the Milotic. So it actually is faster than Xcloud. Xcloud is a very slow guy who honestly needs to be on a team with like sticky web support or like Tailwind or something uh, to be most effective because you don't get outsped by uh, Milotic too often but Xcloud does uh, and that is fine because my plan is this. I bring in Zangoose and I know for sure this thing cannot kill me in one hit and their last Pokemon in the back is Snorlax there. So all I have to do is dance with some swords over here. Look at, this is, might be the sharpest lad on this side of the Mississippi. Dancing with swords, look at them claws. I'm talking about extra sharp out here. And I know I can take one attack from this thing. Ends up going for the Scald and all I have to do is not get burnt, please. And I do not, thankfully. I'm able to get my Toxic Orb to activate. So now Zangoose is out here in full form, ready to just rip and tear through some shit. So I go for the Facade. Full health, Milotic does not give a shit. I don't, I don't care who you are. You're going down to a plus two facade uh, with that <laughs> with that poison as well, uh, the toxic boost. So I am in exactly the position that I needed to be able to take care of this Snorlax. Um, it was kind of a daunting mon in the back of my head the whole time. I needed Zangus to have a boost, but it is perfect. He brings in the Snorlax and of course, turns his Nintendo Switch off. Guy said, these normal types are too much for me and my <laughs> overused standard very effective squad and uh he's, he's gonna rage quit on me so it does not give me the satisfaction of knocking this thing out with a close combat but i assure you that next turn would have been full of a dead snorlax blood everywhere i'm talking about just chaos but that's gonna be the end of the match um first match with this team i was able to get uh, an ou team to rage quit so i'll call that a win and if you enjoyed the video make sure to hit that like button it does help out the channel a lot and i will see you guys next time peace out